Hello everyone, it's Amy. Welcome back for Journaling on a Budget, starting from scratch. And today we are going to work on a page in our book. I think I'm just going to do one page because I'm not exactly sure how to draw the other page in yet. So, um, but we are going to do this page in our book today. And to start with, um, I've just pulled out a few things. I want to use this as a pocket. I want to get this in here. This is one of the favorite napkin ones that I did. And, um... So I've kind of decided what we might be able to do with this, depending on how, how it looks, but I've grabbed out a few things. What I want to do is I want to get my piece of paper, get my page out of there, because there's really not much on the other side. We do have a stamp here, but if we had to replace the stamp, we could, if I if I make a mistake. And um, so this is the page we're going to work on. Don't forget that we numbered our pages, so we'll know where to put them back in our book as we take it apart and put it back together. So what I want to do first is I want to get a little bit of color on the background. I don't really want to stamp it. I think I want to use our watercolors. And I'm thinking I'm thinking just in brown. I'm not sure whether to add blue to it or not. Um, so we'll start with the brown and see how it looks. But I just want to do the watercolor paper like we do. So I'm going to make a spot that's about as big as my page. And that's going to be plenty. Just give it a mist of water. This is just water. It's still got the hairspray label on it, but it's just water. And then we're just going to smoosh that around. If you haven't seen the watercolor technique, these are just kids' watercolor markers, washable markers. And so that makes them so that they spread out. And I don't really like the pattern of that, so I'm going to try maybe adjusting the pattern a little bit, see what it looks like. Don't like that either. But you know, you can just keep going until you get what you think you might like. Now that doesn't look bad. So I'm going to take my page. I'm going to have the pocket at the bottom. So it's okay if I, ooh, I like the way that that turned out. That looks very nice. Now I'll go ahead and put it at the bottom since I have some. Maybe get a little bit of the odd bits over on the side. There we go. I like the way that that looks. So I am going to, what I'm going to do is, because we have the other side of this here, I'm going to grab a piece of tea dyed paper and pick that up because I don't want to waste it. This is either tea dyed or coffee dyed, but... Just gonna grab that up off of there. Pick up any little extra bits that might be there. And then don't forget if you're gonna reuse your bag, which I reuse mine, you'll need to wipe this off um, with a wet paper towel before you use another color because that color will reactivate again. But isn't that pretty? So um yeah, don't forget, don't waste, don't waste your color. And so then we'll bring our book back up here. Um, maybe not our book. Maybe just our bits to go in our book. I prefer to work outside the book. That's just me. And that's why I don't put it together at the very beginning. So I'm going to put this on here as a pocket. And because I know I'm not straight over here, I'm going to kind of let it... Well, no, I think I'll cut it straight before I put it in so I don't accidentally cut the edge of my page. Now, is there anything that I, like, do I want to put any more color on there before I go any further? Now, that is the one thing about working in your book is being able to look at the page next to you. Okay, so we're going to have this here. And what I thought was, because we've got the blue over here, I thought that I would take this blue fabric that we dyed and put that here 
wonder if I wrap it around. I might wrap it around so it'll be, because let's see, the page is going to be next to there. Yeah, I might just wrap that around the whole page. But I thought that I would put that there and then take some of our tea dyed lace and put it right up there, which actually that's the back side. Put that up there. This is going to be down here. I want to cut a circle here and put a flower on here. That looks good. That ties the two together. Do we need a little bit of blue on there? I'm not sure what color the blue shows up as. I'm going to... I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's do a little bit of the blue. And I don't want a lot of it, so I'm going to use this right here in the middle. Do like that. Give that a smush. Oh, too much water, that's for sure. which is what I would need to go with the page next to it. Putting this next to this page. Yeah, it might not hurt to do that. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's put a little bit of blue. And take our page out. Maybe not have so much water this time. And just put a little bit here and there. Just one spray. Oh, didn't spray. There we go. I'm going to grab this water that dripped on there because I don't want all that water in there. that looks like. I'm going to kind of have so much right there, so I'm going to kind of move that around a little bit because I don't want it super dark. I'll drop my scissors. Put a little bit over here. Okay, let's try it. Fingers crossed. And I'm going to put it kind of in the middle here because I'm going to have the pocket at the bottom and the lace at the top. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. And I think maybe I'll get a little bit more right in there. Looks good. Okay, that will kind of tie the two together. What you know, what I'm using and what I have. I'm gonna grab this out of here. All right, so get these strings off of here. And then, okay, so let's put our pocket up here. And it's not straight. Let me just try and cut it straight like this. Okay, that is straight. And then I'm going to want to cut it right here. Uh, this is, you know what? I'm going to fold it. 
that on there. I'm going to fold it right on the edge of the paper and then cut just inside my fold. I never am good at cutting right on a fold. And I want the paper to be just a touch smaller than my page. And there we go. Okay, now we want to have a little punch out of the top there. And since we don't have a punch, I'm just going to kind of figure out where the middle is. I'm going to put a little tiny crease right there because I'm cutting that out anyways. So I know that's the middle. So that'll make me close. Oh, it doesn't work to use a pencil that does not have a lead in it. That's just a little tip. Okay, yep, that looks good. So I'm just going to cut that out. Now this is a little bigger than a punch. So if I wanted, I could have found something smaller, but I like the looks of this. There we go. Yay, now we have our little punch out on there. I like that. So that's gonna go on there like that. I haven't decided yet what we're gonna put in the pocket. I am gonna keep this bit for something because I might want it, both of them, because that might look nice in a collage. Okay, and then we're going to put our fabric on the top. I'm gonna rip it so that I know it's straight. And sometimes if you try and rip too little of a piece, um, it doesn't want to rip. So make sure you give yourself enough to get a hold of to make it rip. Get the threads off the end here. Okay, I have the threads off the end. And there's one sticking out right there. That one that's sticking out is not going this way. It's going down into my fabric. So I don't want to pull that out because it will leave a line down the fabric. So we'll just cut that off. Now, do we want to put it all the way around? Or do we just want to put it on this page? You know, I think we will just put it on this page. And the reason I say that is because we don't know what we're doing with the other page yet. So I'm going to cut it right there. And I like the way the phrase looks, so then it'll have phrase all the way around. Although we're covering it with the um, <laughs> lace, so I guess we won't see the phrase much anyways. There we go. So this one's going to go here. And this is going to go on top of it. Oh, maybe I'll put it just underneath the phrase there, let those stick up a bit. So that one's going to cut right there. Alrighty. Now we're going to put this down. And I'm thinking maybe I'll just glue it at the top. So it can, you know, you're not going to be able to tuck anything under it. So not for a tuck, but just so that it has some movement to it. Let's see, I'm going to set this over to the side over here. Spread that glue out. I don't want it to be super thick or it will definitely um, show through the fabric. It's going to show through a little bit anyways, I think. And I'm going to put those little frays sticking off the top of my page. Because I like the way that that looks. I think that that looks pretty cute. Let's see if you can see it. That looks pretty cute. Alrighty. Push that one up a little bit to 
make sure it's straight. And then I'm gonna just put that on there. Oh, my glue is coming out so fast this time. I put just a drop of water in it because it was really getting thick. But I mean, just a drop, not like to make it like water glue or anything, just barely a little bit. And I'm gonna spread this around. Leave a little bit all the way around, just like that. There we go. And then we'll take, is this the fabric we cut or is this the fabric we cut? Oh, definitely not that one. So we're going to put this one right across the top. And this is a gathered lace. So what you can do if you don't want it gathered is you just have to pull a string and then you'll be able to make this a flat lace. I'm going to go ahead and leave it gathered up there. I might put a little piece of flat down on the bottom. Let's see. I don't really want to put it on there. Where I want to put it is I want to put it across the top here. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to make this straight and that will make it just a little bit ruffly. Right now it's kind of fanned out so you don't see the ruffles. And it makes this top piece curve a little bit. So if we make this top piece nice and straight, it will help with uh, making it look a little bit more gathered, I think. Put that right in the corner there and just line it up as I go. Looks like I might be just a tad short, just a tad, and I'm going to pull that to the outside so that the outside is lined right up with the edge with the corner of the blue. If you have to have a little bit that's going to be off and you know just a little bit like this you want it to be at the center of the book because that's where all the folds come together and it's not going to be noticed anyways so I just want to keep this nice and straight across the top and not let it curve like that and that's what gives us this little bit of, of ruffle here because it's so short it's not going to have a whole ton of ruffle just make sure you keep that straight because that wants to get rounded because it's gathered together uh oh see when i pulled that up that went totally flat So this is tea dyed, so we've got a little bit of a little bit of grunge on there, which goes good with this page. I'm just press down with my scissors because it keeps wanting to stick to my fingers. So this is something you'll want to kind of keep an eye on till it gets nice and tacky. And just make sure that you keep that line straight. Just like that. Alrighty. So now we've got that up there. And... I thought about possibly putting a little bit of it down here, but I want to, where's my craft knife? I don't have a pin. I don't, oh yeah, we do have a pin in this series in our little sewing kit, or I have a pin, I should say. Everybody has whatever they got. I just want to get a hold of that thread 
and a lot of times if you pull from one side or the other um, that's where it will just continue to unravel I'm not so sure about how that works with lace but what you do is you just continue I'm gonna get done with this now you can use the, whoops I can use the point of my scissors you just continue to pull that thread out there is a thread that goes right across the top of the lace and sews a little piece of fabric over this and that's how they gathered it together and so what you're going to do is you're just going to my mom always called it pick that thread and so you just go through and you just pick that out of there all the way across and then when you're done the piece of lace that you have here will be a flat straight piece of lace and I'm going to see and here's the little piece of shear that um, that they have folded over the top to hold it together but you just keep going through and pulling that thread out and a lot of times if you kind of pull on the part that you're trying to remove kind of lift that away a little bit it will show you the you'll see the thread and then you'll know you have to grab that thread right there and pull it out and then pull this away and you see the thread and pull that thread out so because that kind of stretches that thread to where you can get a little pin in there or as I'm using my scissors here just be careful if you've got your scissors open don't cut yourself and just keep doing that all the way across so I'm gonna stop right here because you don't want to watch me do this and I do want to see what it looks like flat because I don't want to ruffle down here but I thought that it might look pretty if it was if I could just put it on there flat and we won't know until we get that ruffle off of there so I'll be back in just a second okay so I have picked that all off the top and now when you look at it it has a very pretty um, scalloped edge on the top and what they had done in places is they caught it and folded it over and so some places it's straight some places it's really kind of kinked up some places it's folded over so I am going to take a quick iron to that to iron that to iron that out of there here is the piece that came off and this was just folded over top of that lace and sewn on so if you have a piece of gathered lace and you want a piece of flat lace just take the little part off the top and you'll then have a piece this will be a piece of flat lace when I iron it if you and remember when I held it up there and said oh no that's not the piece because it was way too short now look at it when I put it on here it's actually the right length to go across here so that actually winds up making your piece of lace longer at the top because it's not gathered anymore um, but if you do not have an iron then you can just get this wet and put it under a heavy book um, just get it wet lay it flat and put it under a heavy book so that it will dry flat and um, that way you can get that flat because I just don't want to leave it all roughed up like that so and you know I know not everyone has an iron but I said in this series I would be using some things I have at home and I do have an iron I don't use it much. I actually think I got it when we when we got married, which was a really long time ago, over 30 years ago. <laughs> so that shows you how much I use it because it still works. So there's another tip for you. You don't have to have all the new stuff. Everybody gets new this, new that, whatever. If you have the same thing and it works, don't buy a new one. Um, it's not going to work any better, really. So I'm going to iron that. And... Um, then we will put it on there and then we'll see if maybe a flower looks good actually this is the same but I think that I like this one like this way it makes those flowers look like they're standing up on there and we can still see the shorthand there and there and the blue that I used I thought when we colored our fabric I was thinking we used the markers but we used our paints so the blue is not the same color blue but that's okay it's still blue it's still okay I'm kind of a real matchy-matchy, like, oh, got to use the same color blue, and I didn't. But it does look all right, so we're going to leave it like that. I'm going to iron this on. We'll put this on and see if we might want to add a flower, and then I think we're going to be done. So I'll be back in just a minute after I get that ironed. Okay, I'm back, and I pulled out some flowers. I have this all ironed, and I'm going to glue it down. So, but see how that, how that has the um, little ruffle there at the bottom, or, you know, 
whatever you'd call that. Let's see here. I'm just going to kind of, well, actually what I'm going to do is, and if you're allergic to glue, don't do this, but I find it a lot easier when I have something like this. because then I can get the glue everywhere. You can also do this on a piece of like wax paper or a piece of your plastic baggie. And then you can get the glue everywhere. And I did get some glue on the top because I didn't think and I patted it down with this finger but normally it doesn't come out the top too much it just stays right wherever there's a solid piece of lace okay and then break my hands off then we need to just decide what flower we want to put on here, if any. I pulled out some purples. I do, there's a couple of like kind of purpley blue ones, but there weren't any real blue, blue ones. I don't really care for that. This is the color I think is going to look the best. It matches that color there, but this is so small. I have a couple of them that color though. Let's see. Oh, I wonder. That looks kind of cute, but it's a little bit too much for me. We just did it like that. Or like that. Hmm. I think I like it kind of like that, so I'm going to set those aside. Keep this one out. This one I thought was pretty, but it's too tall, because then if you want to tuck anything into the pocket, that's not going to work. I got out some white ones. I don't really like the yellow in the middle of those. Mm, too much greenery on that one. I think I'm going to wind up with that first one. I got out some pink because I figured pink goes with blue and purple or with blue. That one's kind of pretty. I still think I like that one better. No. I kind of like that one. That one just goes so much nicer with that color up there. But that one's a little fuller. No. Okay, now you need to be able to tell me which way to go. This one. Alrighty, so we're going to put this on there. And since I have my glue here, we're just going to pick that up. Like I said, don't do this if you're allergic to glue or if you're not sure if you're allergic to glue. If you have any kind of allergies, you don't want to put something like this on your skin. Probably shouldn't anyways. It's just something I've always done with like intricate die cuts because I always had such a hard time getting glue on them. Oh, or a glue sponge. You put some glue on a sponge and keep it in a in a container. We made those in our Build Your Stash series and they work very well. Okay, so this page goes right in here. Just like that. So we have our first page done, and then when you open it up, we have that page done. I think that that looks really pretty, and again, we're going to need to find something to put in the pocket, but we'll have a day where we make some tags or things, little booklets or something to put in the different pockets. I think that turned out pretty. I hope that you like it, and thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day.
Bye-bye.